All right, we're back with um, video three of Unit M review, DC circuits. Okay, let me just, uh, I, I finished that fast, but in 10 seconds, um, well, this is this has a power of eight watts because I squared times R, four squared is four, two squared is four times two, two ohms is eight watts. And that's eight joules per second. So in 10 seconds, if I, if I multiply the power, since power is the energy per time, then if I multiply power times time, that gives me the energy. And so that would be 8 joules per second times 10 seconds. That's 80 joules. All right, onward. Okay, let's do some graphing. Just to ask you some conceptual questions about graphing. Okay, if you do have a resistor and uh, you you're, you um, keep the current in the resistor the same, but this is a variable resistor, so you keep changing the resistance, but you make sure that the current always stays the same. They have such things. They have they have devices that will keep a constant current instead of keeping a constant voltage. And so if you keep the current always the same and you um, change the R, what kind of graph are you going to get if you plot power versus R? Okay, well, there's three equations that you could use. IV, I squared R, or V squared over R. And uh, But since you're keeping current constant, and you want to know how power and R are related, this is the one you want. So if you keep current constant, then what happens is R goes up, then this is just going to be a nice straight line. And we say that power is directly proportional. We say power is directly proportional to R. See, if I double R, at double keep this constant. So if I double R, I double the power. If I triple R, I triple the power. Hey, that, that was so fun. Let's do another one. Okay, so how about um, the length of a wire? We're going to graph. Um, this is the resistance of a wire and the length of a wire. How do they relate? So you got a particular wire. You're going to keep everything else constant, but you're just going to change the, the length and the resistance. What kind of um, graph are you going to get? Okay, so um, resistance is rho L over A. So that's that L is that L. So if I keep these things constant, but I change the length, again, it's going to be directly proportional. So R is directly proportional to L. Whereas if I did um, cross-sectional area, R is, R is um, inversely proportional to A. So if I did cross-sectional area, this is what I would get. R and cross-sectional area, then a 1 over X graph looks like that. That is, um, R is inversely proportional to A the cross-sectional area. All right, moving on. Okay, here I have um, two batteries fighting one another, and um, I would like you to figure out what the voltage at B with respect to A is going to be. What is the voltage at B with respect to A? If I put the red wire of a voltmeter here and the black wire to there, what should I expect to get for the voltage reading? All right, let's 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 see what we get. Did you Try it on your own first. Okay, so um, these are fighting one another, and um, it, this one's going to win. It's bigger, and so the current's going to flow this way. And I'm thinking that we have 6 volts total of, of pushing power. And um, what's the total resistance? 6? Yeah, it's 6. And 6, so it's 1 amp. Why? Because the total the current is going to be the total voltage divided by the total resistance. 
And so that's um, 1 amp, 1 amp, 1 amp. Okay, if I want to know the voltage at B with respect to A, uh, yeah, then I start at A. I start at A, and I work my way over to B. And it doesn't even matter which way I take, but I'll take this way. Um, I'm going to go up 2 volts, so plus 2 volts. And then um, I'm going to go up in an, another 2 volts because the I is 1 amp, and I'm going against the current. Since I'm going against the current, I'm going to go another 2 volts. So that's 4 volts. I should get that same way if I go if I go the other way. Let's see what would happen. I would go up 8. Then I would go down 1 because I'm going with the current. So that's Ohm's losses. That's 1 volt. And then I would go down 4 or 3 rather. Yeah, so I'm getting 4 volts again. The voltage at B with respect to A. B is 4 volts higher than A. All right, moving along. All right, so um, switch is open, and um, the question is, um, what will be when the switch is open? What will be the voltage on the one ohm, the three ohm, the, um, across the one ohm resistor, the three ohm resistor? And what will be the charge on the three farad capacitor? And what will be the voltage at A with respect to B? All right, so um, let's see. You, you should try this. Go ahead and try this. Pause it, and I'll see you in a little bit. Okay, we're back. Okay, now current doesn't flow here. Can't flow this way. It's blocked. Can't flow this way. There's no current. And if there's no current, then I know the voltage is across here. The voltage across this one is, is zero volts. Because there's no current. And the voltage across the 3 ohm is zero volts. Because there's no current. Now that means that we got to drop that voltage somehow to get the ground. So I must be dropping 12 volts across here. And I must be dropping 12 volts across here. If I'm dropping 12 volts across here, Q is C times V. So 3 times 12 is 36 coulombs. Because it's C, 3 farads, times 12 volts. And I know I'm dropping 12 volts because I have nowhere else to drop it to get the ground. What's the voltage at A with respect to B? Okay, if I go this way, I drop 12. So this is at ground. This is basically at ground. A is at ground. Whereas B, if I go this way, I haven't dropped it at all. So I'm 12 volts higher than ground. So the voltage at A with respect to B is negative 12 volts. Okay, now let's close the switch. So if you close the switch... Let's figure them out again. So go ahead and, and pause and see if you can figure it out. Okay, we're back. So um, now the current is going to flow. It's going to flow this way. And that's this, the current that goes through here will also go through here. So we have um, 4 ohms of total resistance. So I'm thinking there's 3 amps going through here. And there'll be 3 amps going through here. And so um, the voltage across the 1 ohm resistor should be 3 amps times 1 ohm, which is 3 volts. The voltage across the 2 ohm resistor, or the 3 ohm resistor, is going to be 9 volts. Um, the voltage across the 3 farad capacitor has to be, let's see, if you drop 3 here, you got to drop another 9. There's 9 volts here. See, if I go this way, if I drop three, I got to drop a whole nother nine to get the ground. Like the mall analogy, you know. Uh, the other thing I could do is I could just go around like this on a loop. So I go up nine, I got to come down nine. So if there's nine volts across that capacitor, then the charge on that capacitor is going to be uh, nine times, it's going to be 27 coulombs, huh? Nine times three, 27 coulombs. What would be the voltage at A with respect to B? The voltage at A with respect to B will be zero volts. All right. I have actually one more problem, I, I, but I'm going to get it done in like three minutes. For So there are four videos, but the fourth one will be short. Okay. See you then. Bye.